Welcome everybody to TechCraft, this is Rob. And in today's video, we'll be talking about how you can automate image processing operations using Apple shortcuts. Let's go. So the iPad and the iPhone are both great devices for working on photos and other images. But if you're anything like me, you'll find yourself doing the same repetitive image processing tasks again and again. Thankfully, with iOS shortcuts, we can automate many of those repetitive tasks. Let's see how. So let's start with a shortcut I use quite a lot, which is one that will automatically resize an image, making it smaller, and then send this out via the share extension on your iPhone or your iPad. So here I am in the Photos app, and I have a photograph open that I took on my Canon EOS R. And it's a cropped version of a 30 megapixel image. So if I try to share this via mail, say, as an attachment, you'll see it's already quite a large image. It's 4.1 megabytes there. What I really want is to send a smaller version in the mail rather than the huge version. Now, I could resize this in photos and then attach the resized version, but I really want to automate that because I'm doing this quite a lot. So let's see how we do that in shortcuts. So here I'm in shortcuts, I'm gonna create a new shortcut. And the first thing I want to do is add the resize image action. And I'm gonna choose 1024 for the width, then we'll leave the auto height so that the aspect ratio is preserved. And the next thing we need to do is decide which image it is that we're actually adjusting. Now I want this shortcut to be triggered from the share, share sheet so I can, uh, I can just choose it wherever I see an image. And I can do that by clicking on the shortcut properties here, disabling show in widget, and then enabling show in share sheet very hard to say. Click done. And now what we have is an input node here that currently that accepts anything, but I'm going to check on that. Deselect all and just choose images. So now I know that the input into the shortcut will be an image. Now I can click on this node here for image and I can click select magic variable and I'm going to choose the shortcut input here. So now that's going to give me a resized image, which is great. And then the next thing I want to do is bring in the sharing node so I can share the resize version onwards. And that is pretty much where we want to be for this shortcut. So let's click next, give it a name. I'm going to call it share smaller. I'm not going to choose a logo this time and ready to go. So if I go back to the photos app, click on this and then scroll down and choose share smaller. It's going to do the resize. It's going to pop up a new share tab this time. This time, if I click the mail, you'll see I have a much smaller version attached. Now, this is really cool, but there is a small problem with it. We're only resizing along the width. What if we have a, an image in portrait? Let's see how that works. If I come back into my album here and choose this portrait picture, what I really want to do is resize it so that the height is 1024 rather than the width. So I'm always using the longest edge to fix which edge I want to resize. If we go back into the shortcut, we can make that change. So here I am back in my shortcut. And what I want to do first of all is add two nodes to get the details about the image that's been passed in. And I want to get the width. And I want to get the height. So now we have the width of the short of the shortcut input, which is the image that's passed in, and the width of the height of the image, which is passed in. Now, what I want to do next is make an if statement. So I'm going to do a conditional execution here. I'm going to say if the height is greater than the width, then I'm going to resize the height. Otherwise, I'm going to resource resize the width. So I just need to get a new resize now. Bring that in and choose resize and choose the shortcut input so you can see this gets a little bit messy when you're adding nodes into the middle of an existing shortcut scheme like this and i'm going to leave the width in place and make the height 1024 so now all i need to do is make sure that the image that we're sharing is the image that's returned from this if block and we can do that by clicking on that choosing clear Clicking again, select magic variable, and notice that the if block has its own result and it's whichever of these blocks was taken. That's cool. Click done to save that. And then now if I come back into Photoshop and I share this image via share smaller and choose mail, then it's cropped along that smaller angle, which is very, very nice. So this is a really cool way of automating a simple image resizing workflow. Another workflow that I do a lot of is downloading app logos from the app store and then processing them and storing them in my photos album. If you saw my coding video up here, you'll see that I wrote a utility to do that in Python, but you can also do the same thing in shortcuts. Let's see how. So here I am back in shortcuts with a new shortcut. And what I want to do is search the app store for the image. So let's do that app store. 
and I can search the App Store. And what do I want to search it for? Well, I want to ask for input. So let's get the ask for input node. And I'm going to bring that one to here. Which app? Now this is going to be uh, text. And we'll just put a default in here for now so we can see what happens. And I'm going to say that I want that to be the output of this ask for input. This is just going to search all these things. So I want to search specifically for maybe iPad only apps and I want to search by all and I want to get max 25 results. Okay, cool. Now this is going to return a list of things and let's see that in action. So if I click play now and run shortcuts, what will happen is I get a list of different results back. I've got 25 results back here and I want to allow the user now to select which app it is they want the logo for. Then to do that, we can use the choose from list I node like this. Okay, so let's run again and see what happens. At Shortcuts app. And now I've got this cool list I can choose from. This is a really smart little node because it knows what the items are. And if there's an image there, it will show the image. It's, it's quite a, a smart way of building a little user interface for your shortcut. So I'm going to click Shortcuts. And then I've only got one app now. So the next thing I need to do is find out what the artwork URL is for that app. And then it's that artwork I want to download. So we can find that out by using the get details node. So I've got details of app store app, bring that in here from the selected item. So that's the output of this node going into here. And then the detail I want is the artwork URL. And maybe we can just play through one more time so you can see what's happening. And now I've got this URL. So all that remains is to get that URL and then make it into a photo and do some processing on it. That's really easy. So to get the contents of the image, we're going to use the get contents of URL node from the web tab here. Bring that down. Scroll that in. So this will bring down all the bytes of the image. Now what I want to do is turn this into a photo and I want to round the edges and then store it on my iPad. So to round the corners of the image, we're going to use the mask image action. So let's do that mask image. There we go. Click on that. And now it's going to mask the contents of the URL as an image. I just want to click on this to make sure it really is an image. And I'm going to change the type like that. And this will do like a type coercion. It will take those bytes and turn that into an image. And I'm going to mask it with a rounded rectangle shape. And I want to make the corner radius 32, which is great. And the final thing I want to do is to store this in the photos. Um, now I can't remember the name of the action for that, but that's fine. I can scroll through here and find that and it's called save to photo album, which would have made sense. I'm gonna save that to my iOS logos folder. And if I click play, and I'm gonna search for something crazy like carrot, which is the weather app. I'm gonna choose uh, carrot wellness there, that's cool. Now, when you access certain websites through the shortcuts you'll be prompted to whether or not you should allow the shortcut permission but once you've been through it a few times it will remember that all those websites are permitted access and the shortcut will just run without any prompt so there we go that's the shortcut run and there's the output and if i go into the photos app you can see in my ios logos album that the image is there so i didn't need to use any fancy coding or any python to do that i was able to do it wholly in the iOS shortcuts app. So hopefully this has given you a quick sense of what you can do with shortcuts, how you can do image processing, how you can access data online, how you can bring down images from online. It's really quite a powerful system here and there's obviously a lot more you can do with it. If you're interested in hearing more about iOS shortcuts, please chuck a comment below. I'm planning on doing one shortcuts video every Sunday just to show a few tips on how you can get the most out of your iPad or your iPhone by using the shortcuts subsystem. As always, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please hit like, please hit subscribe. And don't just hit subscribe, but hit the bell as well so you don't miss out on any future content. And I'll see you in the next video.